Taken on our poverty, a migrant's life he led, but said to God, all comes from thee. A banquet you have spread. This Jesus Christ, who can he be? What marvels does he bring? This carbon We gather for worship. We gather tonight to tell the old, old story. A story of bitterness and betrayal, of despair, denial, and death. We gather tonight to tell an even older story, prepared before the worlds began. A story of love powerful enough to rewrite our endings with the promise of new life. In the telling of the story, in the breaking of the bread, in the coming of the night, we draw near once more to Christ. I invite you to turn to page number 461 in your um, hymnals, 461 in remembrance. You may stand in body and spirit if you so desire.
Our story begins during Passover, which Jesus is celebrating with his friends. The celebration is overshadowed, however, by the threats against Jesus. His words have been rejected, and his time is coming to an end. Let us walk again through Jesus' story. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, you will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. We stand at this table because it is an echo of another table. That table in the upper room in Jerusalem where Jesus sat with his 12 friends friends who would betray, deny, and fall away from him, friends he loved and laid his life down for. The story of God is always the story of faithfulness, of going through the hard times together, of God's yes being louder than all of our maybes. We remember how it all started when God created the world, every precious, beautiful bit of creation God's own artwork, including us. But we rebelled and did the one thing we were asked not to do, and we hid from God in the garden. We were cast out of that garden, but not away from God's heart. When we were slaves in Egypt, God rescued us and fed us with manna in the wilderness, brought forth water from the rock. God was faithful to us while we made idols and broke commandments. Again and again, God said, I am your God, and you are my people. God sent his prophets to call out our disobedience and to promise us that God is faithful still. In time, Christ came to walk among us, to show us just how far God would go to prove his love for us. Christ read to us, sang with us, healed us, fed us, prayed for us, cast demons out of us, grew tired like us. And at the end, at the very end, gave us one last gift. During that last supper, Jesus took the bread and he broke it, saying, This bread is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. 
And after the supper, he took the cup. He poured it out, saying, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, so that their sins may be forgiven. As often as you drink it, remember me. So we take the bread and the cup, tokens of God's everlasting faithfulness. We pray that the Spirit would pour himself out on them to make this simple meal something holy, something to nourish and sustain our faith, something that still tastes like hope. Friends, this is the bread of life, and this is the cup of salvation for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Leah, would you come forward, please? Come forward and receive communion.
we meet up with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he found both solace and danger. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and he prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus prayed. He prayed to his Abba, the Father, he knew and loved because he was hurting and sad and afraid and because he trusted. So we pray with Jesus. I invite you during the pauses to simply offer the names of those you are praying for aloud or in silence. And after each pause, I will say, in your love, Lord, and you may respond, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, in this garden, as night falls around us, we pray. We pray for those who are exhausted, out of energy, out of hope, out of faith, or out of tries. We pray for those who are exhausted. In your love, Lord, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for those who are anxious, uncertain of the future, wary of the present, with hearts and minds that cannot find rest. We pray for those who are anxious. In your love, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for those who despair, for whom the night has been too long, the grief too heavy, and the comfort too shallow. We pray for those who despair. In your love, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for those in pain tonight, whether of body, mind, or soul. We pray for those in need of your healing touch. We pray for those in pain. In your love, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. We pray for those who are too close to death tonight, whether they are entering your rest or grieving someone gone or haunted by what they have seen. We pray for those who are too close to death. In your love, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And Lord, we pray for ourselves and that we would have the strength to stay awake just a little longer, to stick by those we love, to take notice of the suffering, to trust that we are enough. Jesus did not ask his friends to change his fate, only to stay with him, to stay with him as he met his fate. In your love, Lord, fill us with the kind of love that sticks around, even while night is falling. 
And finally, give us the courage to pray as Jesus taught those same disciples, saying, Our Father, who who art art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will will be done, done on earth as it is in in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And the story continues. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once, and he said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a rebel? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching you, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him, and they fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a loincloth, They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. God, your faithfulness to us is so great that we cannot help but fall short. Yet still we confess our sins out of the hope you yourself gave us, that you still set us a place, set a place for us at the banquet of grace. Feed us with forgiveness and mercy. No matter what we have done, no matter what we may yet do. And so tonight, let us join our voices as we confess and we put our trust in you. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. For every every time time you asked asked us us to to stay stay with with you and we wandered away, forgive us. For every time we fell asleep on the job of being your disciples, forgive us. For every time we boasted of our loyalty, yet crept away, betrayed, or denied you, forgive us. For every time we hear the story and think we would do better, forgive us. For every time we meet your faithfulness with faithlessness, forgive us. God, your love for us is unfathomably deep yet you would take all our failures. May we take the gift of your forgiveness and share it with the world that you made and loved so much. Friends, the story we tell tonight is a story of the deepest love, love that would offer forgiveness even to the traitor at its right hand. The bread was for us, the cup for us, the cross for us. We are forgiven, not easily, but the hard way. We are forgiven, not cheaply, but wholly. We are forgiven, and we are freed. Praise be to God. Amen. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, 
We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him and beat him. Please turn in your hymnals to number 450, Lift High the Cross. You may stand in body or spirit if you desire. You may be seated. We leave Jesus with his accusers and come now to the fire where Peter is trying to keep warm on this terrifying night. We end tonight with Peter's story, perhaps because it is our story too. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cro cock crowed. And the female servant, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, 
This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and you talk like one. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. We go out to wait for the dawn. The light is failing. We are failing too. Yet the ancient promise holds true. God does miracles at night. And in just a few days, the dawn will break. The light of the world will rise. And we will see new life. Hold fast. The story is not over yet. Thank you. 